Good morning, everyone. Can we give it up for Sue? Did she do an outstanding job or what? <laughs> Sue, I don't know how you managed to come up here and give your remarks. When I was your age, actually up until maybe five years ago, actually till today, I am terrified of doing public speaking. Okay, let me just ask uh, for a, a raise of hands. How many of you enjoy public speaking? Okay, there's one or two people who raise their hand here. So let me tell you, for the 99.9% .9 of us, Americans were surveyed what their biggest fears in their life are. And they put all sorts of things on that list, from claustrophobia, to dying, to public speaking. The two that made that list onto the highest fears was public speaking and dying. <laughs> so they asked the Americans again, what is your biggest fear out of those two? And what do you suppose Americans said? You got it. So Americans at a funeral would rather be in a casket <laughs> than giving a eulogy. So Sue, you did something remarkable, young lady. I am so proud of you. <laughs> and to April, wow, that, were, that was just amazing remarks you made, so inspirational. And I will tell you, I will, and I love to get dirty. I am a civil engineer, and there's nothing that makes me happier than getting there in the dirt and doing what I got to do. So thank you for your inspirational words that you shared with all of us. Um, I'm, um, as I said, I'm so proud of you, Sue, for uh, what you have done. And interestingly enough, Sue and I have a lot in common. And she said she came to this country when she was six years old, and I came here when I was seven. I don't know if you knew English when you came here, neither did I. And I remember my first day of school when I walked into the classroom in Poughkeepsie, New York. Walk in, none of the kids look like me, and I can't speak a word of English to any one of them. But I want to fit in. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, when am I going to do this? So at lunchtime, I figured this is the best time. You know, food is a great uh, gathering place, right? So I sat next to my classmates in the cafeteria at the table, and I figured I'm going to do everything that they're doing. That's the best way to fit in, right? Just do whatever everybody else is doing. So I ate American food for the very first time in my life. I drank cold milk for the first time in my life. And I'm feeling pretty good. I'm like, OK, I think uh, these uh, classmates of mine are my BFFs. I walk proudly back to the classroom. I sit down at the table, and I proceed to vomit all over my desk. <laughs> I am mortified. My teacher calls my mom. My mom comes to pick me up, and I'm hysterical, and I'm crying to her. And I tell her, I, I want to go back to India where grandma raised me. I don't want to stay in this country anymore, and I hate cold milk. <laughs> and we go back home, and by the end of the day, I hear a knock at the door, and it's one of my classmates. And standing in the snow, in her hands are a stack full of paintings that all the kids in the classroom had made for me with little hearts on it, smiley faces, others with tears coming down. And it was that simple gesture that made me feel that I belonged in this country. It took the public educator in that classroom to teach what I believe is the most important quality of a human being, and that is to have empathy for others. Because every one of us, we have different unique paths in life but we need to understand the struggles and the challenges and to have empathy for others who don't come from the same journey, the same starting point as you and I have. And that was the single most important lesson that I will never, ever forget. And that is what has guided me throughout my life. So I just want to say, you know, thank you, you know, to the educators that do this hard work each and every day. I know you teach kids arithmetic, math, and English, and all sorts of things in school, but know that you're also teaching kids life lessons that they take away with them, that shape them, and make them who they are. 
So today, I am thrilled to be with all of you, with inspiring leaders in the manufacturing industry, people who've paved the way for all the young people in this room today, and women who are history makers, change makers, and barrier breakers. Women like speaker Adrienne Jones, Women like my representative from District 15, uh, uh, Delegate Lily Chi. <laughs> Women like the Chairwoman of Ways and Means Committee, Vanessa Atterbury. <laughs> and the significant women that are from the Moore Miller administration that are here, including our two secretaries. I'm gonna give them a round of applause. Portia Wu and Secretary Martinez. These women I have known for so many years and have deeply admired from the moment I met them. And I also want to extend uh, a great big shout out to Cheryl Bose, who's sitting there right there. There she goes. She is an incredible leader of the Maryland State Education Association. And really, I'm just in awe to know you, Cheryl. And I want to recognize and give a great big uh, gratitude to Mike and Mike, right? That, you know, we used to think in the Maryland uh, House of Delegates and the Senate, we had a Mike and Mike there, too. And so now the Mike and Mikes are here. And I want to thank you both so much for organizing this event today, for your leadership, and for your entire team for making this event possible. Thank you for everything you're doing. And to all the remarkable women in this room, before I ask you for anything, thank you for everything. Thank you for being in this space. And I know this space is not an easy space to be in. I know that because as I said, I'm a civil engineer and I spent most of my life trying to fit into a space that wasn't created for me. Whether it was being an immigrant growing up in a new country or a female engineer in a, a male-dominated field, or as an Indian American woman legislator in a legislature that looked nothing like me. I used to believe, just like when I was a kid, that I had to do whatever everybody else was doing in order to fit into these spaces. But I soon realized that wasn't the assignment. The assignment is to be your authentic self in every space that you walk into. The assignment is to make those spaces bigger so other people that come in after you can feel comfortable and included in those spaces. So I want to thank all the women here for what you're doing to expand these spaces. Because of you, Maryland is home to over 4,300 manufacturing firms. Because of you, it employs over 110,000 people contributing to over $28 billion to Maryland's GDP. So thank you also for being role models to our young leaders. You get it. You understand what it means to be a leader. Because before you become a leader, success is all about growing yourself. After you become a leader, success is about growing others. So to all the students pursuing a career in manufacturing, I salute you. You are how things ought to be in the future. And you get to write the next chapter of not just your life, but of Maryland's too. And so speaking about Maryland, if you all would just give me a moment so I can make a shameless plug for the great state of Maryland. Maryland is the most diverse state in the mid-Atlantic region. Maryland is home to the country's wealthiest majority black counties, which includes Charles County and Prince George's County. Maryland is home to 60 federal agencies, 20 mi military installations, 74 research labs to jumpstart innovation, twice as much as any other state. And we have 57 colleges and universities, including four HBCUs. We also have the Port of Baltimore and BWI Thurgood Marshall Airport. By the way, did you, do you know where the highest concentration of aerospace engineers in the country are? California. 
not the state of California, California, Maryland, in St. Mary's County. I love this fact. Can you believe that? I had no idea until our Department of Commerce put out some data on this, so please share that as often as you can. So to the young people that are here, if you're looking for a career that's exciting, challenging, and full of opportunities, consider stepping into the world of Maryland manufacturing. It's not just a job. It's not just about making things. It's a chance to be part of something bigger than yourself, to create, to innovate, and to shape the future. And Maryland's manufacturing sector has a place for you. And so I want to say that when I came to this country, um, you know, one of the things that I knew immediately was that I wanted to make sure that I could contribute to this country. See, when you come here as an immigrant, you're so very much grateful for the opportunities that are afforded to you. Look, everyone in this room knows our country is not perfect, but you and I have a chance to perfect it. I'm a product of public schools. I'm a product of a public university. I'm a product of public investment. I relied on Pell Grants to get through college. This collectiveness by taxpayers and public servants has made all the difference in my life. And with great opportunities comes great responsibility. So I chose a life of public service to pay it forward, to give back to a community, a state, and a nation that invested in me and believed in me. As a civil engineer, one of the most important things I learned beyond that stress equals force over area and so many <laughs> other things related to engineering, the most important lesson I learned is there are no problems, only solutions. That's what I was trained in, is coming up with solutions. Now, I used to believe that these solutions only had to do with my professional life. I didn't realize it also meant my personal life. So I want to tell you a quick story about that. So early on, it was in 2010 when I first decided to run for the House of Delegates. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a novice to it. I don't know anything about it. I never ran for office before. But one day, I get this angry phone call. I pick up the phone, and I hear on the other side, is this Aruna Miller's office? And I'm like, okay, I'm not about to tell this guy he's speaking to Aruna Miller right now. I'm like, yes, it is her office. And he's like, you tell her to get her freaking lawn signs off my lawn, campaign signs. I'm a Republican. And I would freaking never vote for her. And I'm like, certainly, sir. I'll let her know that. And I hang up. Next call I make is to my husband. I'm like, what the heck did you do? This guy's calling me up and telling me you place signs in his front lawn. And my husband's like, oh, I thought it was a public right of way. And I'm like, what? You're not supposed to put it in the public right away either. <laughs> so I'm thinking to myself, what do I do? OK, uh, look, I can just go pick up the signs, call it a day, right? End of story. But I'm like, OK, this guy lives on the way to my house. And I'm going to have to pass his house every single day. And I'm going to have a panic attack every time I drive by. So I don't want to be in this situation for the rest of my life. So I decided that I'm going to go ahead and um, confront him, right? Come up with the solution to the problem. So I, he's got this 15-acre you know, farm. I pull up the long driveway, and I'm like, oh my gosh, maybe I should call my husband, let him know if, if I don't come home, this is where to find my body, right? I knock on the door, and I am petrified. I'm prepared for anything. He's going to have a shotgun in my face when he opens that door. Open the door. And this elderly, sweet little couple opens the door. And they're like, hi. And I go, hi, you know, I got a call from a guy named Jed. And they go, oh, that's our son. And you know, I explain that, hey, I'm sorry these signs are here. I'm here to remove them. And they're like, oh, why don't you come on inside? And I'm like, oh, I'm not sure that I want to <laughs> go inside. But I go ahead and take the courage, and I go inside. And we have a lovely conversation over tea. And it's about a half an hour. We say our goodbyes, and you know, we, I leave. And before I even get home, I get a call from that guy named Jet. 
He's like, is this Aruna Miller? And this time I go, yes, it is. And he's like, I heard you were just at my house. And I said, yeah, I was. And he said, my parents really liked you. <laughs> and I go, you would too if you met me. And he's like, well, then why don't you come over? And I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> and so I go back, and I go to his house, and I meet him. And we talk about a whole bunch of different things. And, you know, yes, he and I had difference of opinion on many matters. But when we sat down and actually talked to one another, rather than screaming at each other and trying to cha you know, change each other's opinion on a matter, it's amazing how much can get done, how those bridges can be developed when you just take the time to listen to people. So I had a great conversation with Jed. The very next day, Jed put up a sign in his front lawn that said, Republicans for Aruna Miller. <laughs> and he contributed to my campaign. <laughs> and to this day, he's one of my dearest friends. So I think about you know, that lost opportunity. Had I not taken the courage to go and confront this problem you know, that was a big problem, but I decided to take it on. So I want to tell all the young people, there's going to be so many times in your life that you just want to run away and you don't want to deal with it, but know that it's not a sign when you, you, know, when you face these uncomfortable situations for you to run away. It's a sign for you to forge ahead, to take on that matter, because there is either an important person an opportunity or a lesson that you're supposed to mean. So take on this as much as you can. So the last thing I want to remind all of you is that, look, as I said, Maryland is an incredible place for so many things. We have quantum computing, cybersecurity, all sorts of things that are taking place in Maryland. In fact, College Park, Maryland, Forbes magazine has described it as the epicenter for quantum technology in the United States. So that's another area that I certainly hope that some of you will consider um, as you're looking for your future careers. And Baltimore City has now just been recognized as the tech hub by federal government. 30, only 30 places across the nation have been recognized, and Baltimore City is one of them. So really, really proud of that. And so what I want to say is the future is here, and the future leaders are all in this room. As Henry Ford said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Henry Ford, of course, uh, created the whole manufacturing of the automobile. He understood it wasn't about faster horses. It's about thinking outside of the box and doing you know, uh, improvements in our manufacturing, which he did. So the final lesson that I want to tell you is that Governor Moore has a sign and a quote in his office that reads, things don't just happen, they're made to happen. So we have created what's, what is the first in the nation public um, service year option for high school graduates. So I want to tell every one of the juniors that are in, because the, uh, for the seniors as well, we have just started the, a cohort class of a service year option. And the idea behind this for one year that you uh, get to enter the workforce and serve in your communities, you all get to decide what it is that you want to do, whether it's education, technology, environment, transportation, and we'll pair you up, whether it's with government or um, you know, a private entities or nonprofits. For one year, you'll, you'll get paid minimum wage, $15 an hour, and if you complete the year, you get a stipend of $6,000. Governor Moore and I believe in the power of experimental learning. Hands-on learning is so important to young people. And we also believe in the power of service because those who serve together stay together. Service is sticky. So whether you become a manufacturing tycoon or the next great tech giant like uh, Susie Gantz uh, in manufacturing, I want to give her a great big shout out. She's been an incredible leader for over 30 years in this industry. So whether you become the next Susie Gantz of the world, I want you to remember, I hope you make service a central part of your life. 
because when we surf, we help create a more gentler, kinder, and a more inclusive world. When we serve, we, we uh, shift from a life of consumption to a life of contribution. When we serve, we go from a life of me to a life of we. It is said that the two most important days of our lives are the day that you're born and the day you discover why. You're about to embark on a journey to discover the second most important day of your life, and that is when you find out and learn the purpose of your life, your why. And when you discover this to all the young people here, you'll find that your life opens up in ways you could have never imagined. So know that Maryland will always be rooting for you. From Governor Moore, myself, and the entire Moore-Miller administration, happy holidays to every one of you. Thank you. <laughs>